So first I'll share my screen so you can see what I'm saying. Okay. If we can get to that. Do, do, do. No, it's all right. So you should be able to see my screen. It'd be, it might be a little bit brighter until we get into game, just because my monitor is kind of troll. But it, it should look normal once we get into game. Yeah. Um. So which one was it that you wanted me to look at? Was it this Lux one? Uh no, it was, it, it was, I think, that one. yeah, that one, this one, okay, I was, I was gonna ask, though, like, it, I'm, I'm, if, if you don't, ha like, have an answer for this, which you probably would, I'll just, like, want you to look at that one, but, like, there's also a, a Nami loss that I recently got that I feel like is more indicative of how I usually lose games, this one like, here, the zero ten, I, or the zero four. <laughs> oh wait, that's the zero ten. yeah, the lost, yeah, but I, uh, yeah, I don't know which one you think is like probably better to look at because I am curious about both, and I was probably still gonna go with the Lux one. Um, so yeah, yeah. I don't know. Just, what... You have like it, an intuition. So yeah, so usually it's just kind of like whatever you prefer to play and what you actually want to learn more. Mm -hmm. um, there'll probably be elements of both games that we'll be able to talk about anyway, and if there is time, we'll go on to. We can like we can maybe do like Lux for forty minutes or something, forty five minutes, and then with any extra time we can go on to Nanami. Yeah, like, good. like the sessions I've done are usually around about. I mean, I say they're like an hour long, but usually we we go over like about an hour and fifteen, an hour and twenty. So it's no big problem if we do run over a little bit. Okay, are you sure? Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Everyone's always right about you know wasting my time or whatever. It's fine, honestly. <laughs> I want to make sure that you're getting the um. Right. I'm looking at my old profile. Uh, I want to make sure that you're getting the, uh, right. you know, what you need in order to climb. So you are bronze three. So you're in the pits of hell. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, according to like Riot's matchmaking, I'm probably like silver or elo ish. Like, okay. Like, my MMR. Uh, I don't know. I just would base this off of looking at my op.gt mm -hmm. <laughs> team average, but I don't know. How long have you been playing ranked for? That's, that's a weird question. Uh, like, it depends because I played ranked, uh, like ba basically on and off. I okay. played a lot in like season 10, -ish, I want to say, and then just like haven't really played much until now. Right, so this is like the first kind of season where you want to climb properly, right? Uh, I wanted to, I wanted to like climb a lot at the end of I think either season ten or season no, it's definitely season ten. Okay. Twenty twenty, whichever season that was. At yeah. the end of twenty twenty, I wanted to climb really uh, badly, but I was just like not good and very anxious. Right. Um. Okay. I mean, in terms of. Champion pool, I think Nami and Lux is fine. I mean, honestly, at your ELO, I think just you just play whatever you find comfort. Um, so, I mean, you seem to really want me to look at this Lux game, so I'm happy to look at the Lux game. I mean, I, I like I prefer doing losses honestly because it yeah. tells me more about your mistakes and um, yeah. All right, we we'll have we'll jump in. Okay. So usually when I'm talking to people that are unranked to around about silver, the main area that we kind of focus on mm -hmm. is laning phase. Because you're going to be playing laning phase for every single game that you do. We will brush into mid game and late game a little bit, but the, the main topic of focus for today is going to be like laning phase and making sure that you have a solid laning phase. Um, I don't know if this is the best game for that then. Because this game, I, we, we had, like, a pretty big lead okay. until I, we fed Nyla, basically, which was, like, well after laning phase was over, I think. Okay. But. Alright, if it, I mean, if that's the case, I mean, going against a Yumi, generally, there isn't going to be a, a massive amount to jump to. So we can maybe go into more of a mid-game then with the Lux and then focus more yeah. on the laning phase of the Nami then. Because okay. against against the Yumi and and Anelia, I mean Yumi against Yumi anyway. It's just 
You shouldn't be dying in that lane. It's just annoying. Yeah. So you guys are doing a little trap here. You take Q. Okay, I like... First thing I want to know is, like, perfect job already, by the way, not leveling up your ability until you know what's happening, okay? So I'm going to credit you on that. You're doing absolutely fine here. Oof. Okay. Okay, so there is something I want to talk about this. And it's nice that it pays off you get a double kill. So one of my main concerns here is if you do this again... What did these two just do? Great question. What, what did these like, two just do? What did they literally just do? They, they, they walked out off of, like, they, they leashed? Yeah, exactly. They leashed, which means that you know the jungler's here, right? Right. So if you go too deep into this, what happens usually is that the jungle will just, you know, kind of, like, retract back and try and look to help. Because you guys are then super over far overextended here. So if you if you try and do this again in the future, I would be very, very wary about enemy jungler coming into this brush because you have obviously uh like this is your vision. You can't right. see like what's happening down here. So this initial binding here is great. The overlap here is great. Throwing down summoners, fantastic. Fail flash there from the is rough. The fact that you get that is really, really good. But now I would be very concerned, like, where's the enemy's jungler? Uh, right. Because then also the Yumi could just reattach to the to the Diana. Right. And then she would be fine. And then you could potentially get caught out quite badly. So um, don't... It's a bit of a bait. It, luckily, it works out for you in the end. But just do, be very, very careful. Because you already the information that, it, that you have is that, you know, Diana was just here just doing the buff. Fortunately for you, she's not caring. But that could have cost you someone as maybe life that maybe Yumi survives as well because she gets to reattach so do be careful um so you've got two options here when you're coming back into lane after doing that you can freeze the wave to deny Nelia and Yumi XP and it keeps you in a safe position in lane or you can shove it in and then try and crash your red minions to this turret and then look for a recall um since Caitlyn is bashing down, so basically, like, as a support, a lot of the time it's just going to be dictated about what your AD carry is doing. So you can see that Caitlyn's here straight away and she's already autoing the minions. So your job then as a support is to try and copy what she's doing and push in the wave at the same time. Does that make sense? Yes. So here you would be auto hitting minions. If you had your E, it'd be even better just to push in, but. I don't know if you're watching your movement here. Um, like the, the whole time you come back into lane, you haven't actually auto hit a minion yet. So here, like as I said, like before, like the Caitlyn's like pushing in the wave as well. But you you kind of need to help with this as well. It's nice that you've you've decided to help on on this. You need to keep helping when you get level two. You could chuck on abilities onto Neri or help push in that wave. It doesn't really matter. But you're looking for a reset at this point because once we enter here. Okay, you, because you got that double kill, which means that you're currently sitting on uh, 932 gold in your inventory, you're probably going to want to look for that recall. Um, that would probably be like the, the, the safest and most secure thing for you to do. If Caitlyn refuses in this situation, um, you can still stay. You do have suitable resources to stay. It's just kind of awkward because you are sitting on that amount of gold. So if my AD carry in this situation was going to stay, I would probably just stay and join them in because it, and try and poke out the Nelia from under the tower and try and stop her from CSing. Do you have any questions at this point? Um, yeah, that was, I guess that was the, one of the main things that I was worried about was like in this, like, a lot of the times, like, if I think that my AD carry is making a bad decision, should I, do I just, like, back them up on it no matter what? So, or, like, yeah. What, where's the sliding scale on this? Okay, so, usually to do a wave management, the AD carry has, like, the final say. If you see your AD carry pushing in a wave, you're going to want to help um, pretty much every single time because you could end up in an awkward situation here where 
let's just say this is like longer in the laning phase mm -hmm. and a situation where which happens frequently but when, it, when i'm watching games is because the support hasn't pushed in it's meant that like for example these red minions haven't come towards this tower quick enough and what happens is like this blue wave here for example would would block where but wherever this bright lux shining light is the minions would be blocked here so these red minions wouldn't get under turret and this puts you in an overextended position because it means that you kind of have to stay to push in this wave otherwise they could freeze the wave as well do you know what i mean by, when i say freeze the wave yeah it means that you keep the wave kind of like close to your tower but not at your tower yeah exactly so you don't want in a situation where the enemy has the potential to do that because when you're in this position, imagine the wave was 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 being held here because you didn't put, get to push it in quick enough. Um, where this, you know, blinding light is, it does open you up to jungle ganks and things like that. So you do the being in this position is generally unfavorable. Um, so not by not helping push in a wave, it this situation can happen a lot. So if your AD carry is pushing in a wave, you want to do that just to make sure this situation never arises and at least like the cannon minion can make it to the turret before this next wave comes through. Otherwise, it's going to be in a really, really awkward position for you. Okay. So because your AD carry stayed, it's fine to stay. Um, I wouldn't... Okay, so here in this situation, it's all about using the advantage that you've got. You still have good resources here you've also got two levels up so what's this new you're going to be doing in the next like 30 seconds she's just going to be trying to last hit minions under the turret right yeah your job here is to make it hell for her so okay. you you need to be paying attention to when she's looking to like last hit like a minion you know, you can see one of these minions is getting down low HP. She's going to try and auto attack it. When she auto attacks something, she's going to be standing still for like half a second. Like that point is like a really good point to throw out your E just to do a quick bit of damage. Um, yeah. So that's that's the kind of thing I'm, I'm looking for here. So here, for example, your E is off cooldown. I'm watching you to see if you do it and you do it. So that's what you want to do. You just want to be, you want to grief this... Um, this near you as much as possible. Right. Mm -hmm. So once again, you've got another kind of situation where it's like, well, you could recall. You need to be kind of be careful about near you looking for an engage. You guys are getting out traded and out poked a little bit. Just trying to see what's going on here. You're doing a little. <laughs> Do a little bit of BM dancing. Okay. So, yeah. So, I was going to mention. Right. So, the problem here is when playing against an, a hard engage AD carry is that you can chuck out your E's. I'm happy for you to chuck out your E's. But you're going to have to be really careful about your bindage usage. Because once that is used, that's going to open you up to some vulnerability. Uh, that's your only real source of crowd control here. Um... And she can also wind wall away your Q or your E. So you do need to be a little bit careful about that. You will need to respect that. So here you land your Q, which is great. Um, but at that moment in time, you kind of just need to back up. Because she's going to dash onto you as quickly as possible. And then it can open you up. Luckily you guys are able to... Push them back a little bit. It's a shame once again that the Caitlyn trap didn't land because otherwise that would have been a more favorable position. But here now resources. Now I'm looking at like your health bars and your mana bars. These are, this is like your resources. Now they're starting to get quite depleting quite low. It's still quite early on into the game. My main concern is that you guys get baited by a potential. Um, just overstaying basically trying to kill this new year. Yeah. Because that's how the majority of deaths happen in bot lane in the lower ELO brackets. It's this champion here, it's on 50% HP. It's super annoying. You guys know if you land your abilities perfectly, you can get the kill. But nine times out of ten, it's usually not worth it. Especially when, in this case, for example, if you look where your jungler is, he's on the top side of the map. 
So I'd be very concerned um, because you won't get back up basically is what I'm trying to say is if you do get ganked by Diana, you're not going to get back up. If you get overextend and get caught off here, Diana replies, it could end up being a little bit dangerous. So that is one of the things you need to kind of look at um, when coming in here. But once there's nothing really like dramatically bad about the gameplay of, of what you've been doing right now. I think it's just standard stuff. The only thing is like the wave pushing in. And here we have the potential gank that I was kind of worried about earlier because your resources are dipping down. I think Diana could have probably pushed into more of that, but I think that should be a big warning for you guys. It's like, you know, your jungle is on the opposite side of the map. You know their jungle's yeah. bot side. This wave's kind of pushed in. It's not perfect, but overextending here could mean you, you die. I think here you'd be looking for a recall, ideally, and trying to communicate that with your Caitlyn, like... I got a lot of gold. At this point, you're on 1,350 gold, which is like a crazy amount for a support at four minutes into the game. You want to buy. You really want to buy. You want to try and communicate that to your AD carry here. This is a bit of an L game for me. Yeah, so this is what I'm... I think... Okay. I, yeah, I, I think she kind of lets you out. I... I think we're lucky here. I think Diana yeah. could probably pressure summoners, but you can see now like your health is getting lower and lower and lower. You're having to overextend really deep into the lane. You know the jungle's bot side. I would be much more like we need to like recall. At that point, you kind of need to communicate that to your AD carrier that you need to reset. And if what's like in the hypothetical situation that like. I try communicating with her and she like says no or like she she just mm -hmm. keeps pushing so first then. the first thing I would do is like with you know I would start recalling and so and then start mm -hmm. typing I need to back or like okay. let's say can like can we reset if, if that's if that doesn't happen and during this kind of situation I'm not happy with you staying with these this health I think this is too deep too too, too low and you know the jungle's down here I would just say at this point, that's when you got to cut ties and just go, we, I, I can't stay in this lane anymore. It's too risky. We have to go so far. Mm -hmm. I think you just take the recall. Now, if your Caitlyn stays in the lane, um, that's not obviously ideal. Generally, you want to have the same recall timings with your AD carry so that you go back and forth at the same pace. Otherwise, it ends up being disjointed because what could end up happening is that you recall, which you kind of need to do. Caitlyn stays. Then you come back into lane. And then Caitlyn goes, oh yeah, I now I need to recall. And then you're left in lane by yourself. So to try and reduce that happening as much as possible, when you recall, you want to look at coming down this avenue down here. Um, and then if you can already see your Caitlyn's recalling, you just want to come back. You want to try and see if you can do something on mid. Whether it's just a bit of vision, or if you actually are able to make a play, that is the kind of time that you move for about 30 seconds on the map. And then once you okay. can see Caitlyn's gone back, you can then start thinking, okay, I need to start entering back into bot lane to try and, that, and then that's the way that you can kind of link up coming back into lane at the same time. Does that make sense? So would you say just like, yeah, this didn't actually happen this game, but it's happened in other games, which is why I ask, mm. uh, like where I would recall. Like, yeah, I mean- Would you just say then, Sorry. No, no, sorry. Yeah, carry on. Would you just say, like, when, like, so, like, when the recalls, like, are disjointed, like, that is then the time to, like, go and look mid for... Yeah, exactly, okay. because you don't want to be in a situation in lane where you're by yourself, because then it means that you're, you're pretty much doing nothing on the map, essentially. Um... You, for example, you can't come back into the lane. Imagine Caitlyn wasn't here, you can't, and you... Imagine Caitlyn wasn't here, you had full resources, you know, imagine these guys have poor resources. You can't come back into a lane this deep by yourself, for example. Okay. You, so then you need to make yourself useful elsewhere. There's no point in just standing on the turret for one minute, because otherwise you're basically dead for a You might as well be dead for a minute, right? Okay. So you then need to look at trying to do something. Usually, sometimes it, it can just be as simple as putting a ward down somewhere in the river for vision to make it harder for your mid laner to be ganked. Uh, okay. It may seem minor, but it, it could end up helping. Uh, when you get into this position, who knows, maybe the enemy jungler could be making a play on mid 
and then you can counter it. Like sometimes those random events happen, but at least it means that you're there as opposed to maybe like staying AFK under turret waiting for your kitten to come back into lane. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of thing, uh, the kind of things I'm looking for because you, I, I don't want you to die just because, I mean, we already know the information that the enemy jungle is down here. Your resources are low. It must at this point for you be feeling pretty unsafe. Yeah. Like here, it's a must recall. Like here, it's an absolute must. I mean, this plate is such a bait. Like in the, now, I'd like it would be recall time for sure. Because at some point, you guys need to decide when to go home. You can't just keep. You can't play through the laning phase of, I'm gonna stay in lane until I die. Because <laughs> that's sort of the kind yeah. of like, the situation that you guys are gonna be ending up in if you're not careful. And you can see the diners are already kind of thinking back and forth, like, can I make a play here? Can I do something here? And yeah, you got absolutely no mana now, so the only thing you can do is auto attack, so you really don't want to be here. Yeah. I mean, that is that that is good, right? And if you were able to do that, like, a wave or two ago, you just channeling your recall instantly enters into Caitlyn's mind, okay, my support wants to reset. Try and get that kind of, like, seed of recall in their brain. See, now they're recalling. I think if you didn't press the recall button, I don't think they would have recalled. Okay. Does that make sense? Look, I, I think if you look at the yeah. Caitlyn's movement right now, I think she, like, if you watch it, she's moving forward. She's she's up for more. Yeah. <laughs> and she, then she sees you recalling. She's like, ah, yeah. Okay, yeah. We, you know, my Lux is, you know, now it's time to reset. But honestly, it should have been like a wave or two ago. But you can see how much power you have just pressing the recall button. So this is a like over on hindsight. Like it's it's fine that this has happened in hindsight, but really the the threats here on high Ela, you would get massively punished by jungle kinks. Like in gold, for example, you guys would have already been dead. If I'm going to be completely yeah. honest, because of it. so you do need to make sure that those recalls come in sooner. Um, so that's my biggest advice at the moment here. Help with pushing if your AD carry does it, and look for those resets at the same time. And earlier resets. Mm -hmm. In terms of like mechanics or anything like that right now, there isn't much, but then again it is up against the Yumi, so it's not like much to showcase. But so far like, there's been nothing wrong at the moment from what I can see from that end. So yeah, here you just need to be really, really, really careful because like, like landing that binding's fine, but you you watch your movement here, you're getting really, really close to this near you for no reason. Okay, so I'm going to put it on like 1.5 and you can kind of see how close you get. Like here. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. th this is melee range now. So you, you shouldn't ever put yourself in a situation like this where you're on melee range or a, when you're a range champion. Um, mm -hmm. So th you, you need to, you basically should just stay back to where you were originally. When you landed that binding, you were fine. Like you were fine here, but that that bridge there it is just asking for trouble. Okay. Because you've already used your E, you've already used your Q. The only thing you have left is auto attacks at that point. So once you've done your burst, you don't need to stay like in there massively for a, like a huge amount of damage, right? At that point, once you've got all your abilities on cooldown, your number one priority should be safety. Because any trades that you do here at this point, if you're throwing an auto onto the Nilia and an AD carry is hitting you back, the trades are always going to be against you. Yep. So just be careful of that position in them. Okay, we're getting pretty aggressive here. I mean, the vision here is fine. This vision's good. Nilia's getting low. I, I, I prefer this, that you just chucking out your ease, like semi max mm -hmm. range. Like at the distance, like you damaged that Neil, you're over here. Like there's no, there was no like need, for example, like to get that as close as you did earlier. Just keep that distance away. Nice binding. Free flash. Nice binding. I think the priority right now though, it's just pushing this wave and then look for a reset. Because you don't want to be in a situation where you guys have used everything. You can already see Caitlyn's mana is getting quite low. You already know now the jungle is down here. You just want to get this rid of this wave and then just go home. 
because this new is going to come come in she just bought some new items she's full health, health and resources if you guys stick around it could end up being bad I think even in this situation, it's okay to abandon the wave when it's like this, just so that you guys can get a good reset on, or help with the stronger than that's fine too. Okay, recalls are good, both recalling at the same time, I'm very happy about that. Item wise, you have Salt Shoes and the last chapter, three kills. Yeah, I mean, you're in a really happy place right now. Um. I'm going to zoom through the laney phase a little bit because I feel like it doesn't get interesting until my let's get it. Yeah, you can start seeing the power of Nilo and the engage and stuff. Nothing really else to kind of comment on right now. Another kill. Nice binding. Another kill. <laughs> <laughs> My ADC in this game got, I think, a little bit upset that I took so many kills. I mean, it's all fine right now. Bit of a free use there of binding, though. Just be careful about that. I'm just going to replay it for you. Okay. So, you guys are quite low in resources. Right. Just, like, there isn't much reason to stay here at this point. Don't make Q okay. your first ability that you're chucking out. Make it your E to slow her. Yeah, you guys don't need to be here at all. Like, you guys just need to reset. There's no need to harass this, this Nina. She's trying to see us on the turret. You're not going to get this last turret play anytime soon. Caitlyn's only got 84 mana left. You're like half HP. Yumi's about to come into lane. So at this point, you're going to be fighting Nila, Yumi at 100% health and mana. And then if you look at your two's resources, like, you can see the difference, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you guys are sticking around for way too long at this point. Like, pushing this wave in was fine. Here's where you just reset. It's just like, okay, we're pushing the wave. Neo has to clear out the wave. Let's just go all the way back and start recording. Because what I can tell is if you guys are going to stay, yeah, that's already put you in it. That, if that Neo you played that at a better, you would actually be dead. She could have win your, your binding. Um, she could have walked into you rather than to the sides. So I'm just going to show that just so that you can see. So... Like Yumi catching you off, like if the if the Nui just runs straight at you, she's gonna close that gap. Yumi ha he would be movement speed if she wind walls that binding as well. It's a really really dangerous situation to be in because then that Yumi Q would also land because she would be near in range. Yeah. So yeah, so you got to be careful about that. So the, the the main takeaway, the main mistakes I'm seeing from you right now is just that you're not recalling um, early enough. You're overstaying in lane a lot. <laughs> Okay, this is fine. Oh. It was a clever buy it, play by them. Very lucky to make it out alive. Recessing straight away after that. Would be good. You're worried about the Zara faulty, I get it. Yeah, that's fine. Like here, for example, okay, here's a, here's a perfect example of the disjointed recall. So you know that this Caitlyn's on 30 to 40% HP, very low on mana. You can, like just by looking at that, you should be able to tell that she is going to want to recall pretty quickly. So if you go down to bot lane, you could be end up being by yourself for a decent chunk of time. So if I were you, I would path down, like I mentioned earlier, and try and see if you can maybe get a bit of vision in, in this river safely, whether it's standing like over this wall and putting it over into this brush here. Just like little random things like that, just to help out your mid laner and just give yourself a little bit more vision on the map. Because I don't want you to be in lane by yourself like this. Okay. I don't want you in this situation where you're by yourself because you're kind of face checking bushes here now by yourself. You don't know where the enemy diner is. If I put it, switch it to red, like it, the map for you is blank. The only people that you can see on the mini map right now is Nui and Yumi. And you're trying to face track brushes in the river by yourself. So you need to be very, very careful about that. 
So don't try and ever come back into lane by yourself. Like going that, that also another thing here, like I'm just watching here, here now, there's no reason for you to be here. Okay. You're not going to be CSing this wave. The only thing that you're, there's two things here that you're doing. You're revealing your position to the enemy. Like they could have been, oh, where was this Lux? This Lux is missing. We don't know where she is, right? Now you've given that information up. Now they know that you're there. But also be like earlier, you're literally in lane by yourself. And I don't want you to be in a position to get caught out for no reason whatsoever. Okay. Do you have any questions on that? Uh, don't have any questions on on that. Did you have a different question? I, well, I was just wondering because, like, I noticed I've I've watched this game through already. Uh, okay. Like, and I like I don't know if you have any like advice on vision or if I should just ever hear like it's not important at your at your lane, so don't like worry about it as long as you're warding like the river. Mm -hmm. So I think I think your basic warding has been okay. Like apart from as we mentioned here, face checking this brush by yourself was a, a risk. If, if like when the mini map is blank, for example, I, when you're playing a champion like Lux, you should just chuck out your E first before face checking that to give you vision. Mm -hmm. um, so I would have liked to have seen that at least a minimum. If you are going to be literally by yourself like this, then do that minimum to in order to make sure you're not face checking a jungler. Um. So what I tell everyone is that the most important ward in League is um, a little bit later on, maybe when we're approaching the mark, if you're able to room to mid um, or somewhere around the mid game onwards, the most important ward in League is somewhere in this mid lane. So kind of like where this Zeref is standing right now, that's a perfect place for a ward. If this tier one turret is dead, then somewhere around here. And the reasoning behind that is two things. So it helps you see rotations, where the mid laner is going to roam to. Um, the mid laner can give you a lot of information to see where like the enemy uh, jungler is going to be too. So if they're planning on doing like Rift Herald, if you suddenly start seeing like Herald, uh, Zeref moving up towards the, the top side, you know, there's a good chance he's probably looking to do an objective on that side. It's the same if he's coming bot and that way you know he's coming bot. Uh, number two, it helps out your mid laner. It means that he can uh, then dodge skill shots, um, especially from like something like a Zeref as well. So mid lane ward is like really really important. the The second most important ward really is just where have you? Um, as stupid as it may sound, just is uh, where have you need it? Um, so in in lane, as you've been doing with these brushes, absolutely fine. Um, if you're feeling like you're confident enough to get a ward into like this brush for example when you're playing on red side which you're on right now if you're feeling confident enough to get a ward here that can be very powerful because it can spot it doesn't get cleared out that often because most people put a control ward in this tri brush so if you can try and find a place to sneak it over then uh then a ward here is really really good it doesn't get cleared out that often at all another option is is if you are finding yourself rotating or roaming a bit putting a ward on the opposite side of this dragon pit so like over here it's really good too because no one's really going to have a control ward here the control ward in the tri brush isn't going to reach a ward from over here and the control ward from this brush isn't going to reach this ward here same way over here a control ward is not unless they put it at the tip here which is super unlikely um so having a ward here can be really really powerful if you're playing on bot side the wards if you're playing on bot blue side you got your the tri brush, which is pretty standard. If you want more aggressive vision, the best aggressive vision ward I can tell you is uh, do you know about the ward when you're in river and then toward the tri brush? So if you're standing in this river here, you can ward this tri brush. I've seen you do it, but I haven't done it. Yeah, it's something like you will probably will want to learn. I wouldn't say right now it's super urgent, but it is a really like cool trick to do, and I, and you, something that you can practice in the practice tool. I'll send you a DM of that of that video I made. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend you check that because it will help a lot in terms of being able to see. So, for example, if you're playing, say you're like on you're the Yumi with this Neoya, and you're worried about you know Shaco 
come in over this wall to come and gank or whatever, right? If you had if they had this try brush warded, you'd better see that well in advance, right? Those are junglers wait in this brush when you're pushing like when the enemy is pushing in the turret to dive off. Like if there was a Zac there, like jumping over. So being able to ward this tri brush is, is really efficient, but you don't want to have to go all the way up the river, enter here, and then ward over, and then go all the way back or use the blast cone to get over. It's it's you save a lot of time just by walking up to this river spot and warding over. So in, in lane, those are like the kind of wards that you're kind of looking at. It's generally, from what I've seen from you though, it's it's standard. There isn't anything really like blatantly wrong with what you're doing apart from that face check in the brush. So mm -hmm. I'll keep an eye on it. At, um, I think you're doing fine at the moment. So Shikazoon Dragon. Doesn't really need help. So you just kind of just want to keep the momentum going. You basically just don't want to die. But another thing to add as well, you've got, because you've got so many kills, you've got this 500 yeah. gold bounty on your head. So if you die, you're going to give the enemy team person that killed you 800 gold. Yeah. So that would be like my main concern. Like you're doing enough damage as it is. You're going to get like, your loot in soon. Just either, don't take any unnecessary risks essentially at this point. Because otherwise you will be literally giving the enemy team pretty much like, much like three kills worth of gold for dying. Nice binding, nice instant ulti, but did take a lot of turret damage. Nice E. Okay. Going back onto the same thing I mentioned earlier, just be careful about your own life, especially when you got a bounty. Like here, it's fine, absolutely fine to recall. You don't need to stick around. Putting a ward in that brush is absolutely fine. Yeah, run all the way back, good. <laughs> um, okay, so here we kind of got another situation where it's like, Caitlyn's by herself, do you come down and help? Do you know what the answer is? I don't, I, yeah, wait, there's, well, in this situation? Mm-hmm, yeah. Well, the, where else is there to go? Exactly. So, yeah, so it is absolutely fine to come back into Bolin. It's not like a trick question or anything. Like your mid laner is bot side. If you go into mid, like the mid waves already put, there's, there's no reason to go mid whatsoever here. Even though the recalls are disjointed, everything is still happening bot side. So it's absolutely fine to go bot in this situation. I'm not trying to like freak you out of like a trick question or anything. It's just making sure that you uh, understand what's going on. So at this point though, you will need to be aware that this Caitlyn does need to recall at some point. She's got really, really low resources, even though you just entered back into this lane. There's a lot going on here. I would... Did you have your E up already? Yeah, just I've only seen it a couple of times. Honestly, you're better mechanically played in terms of uh, skill usage than some of the silver and gold luxes I've seen. Here is like kind of the classic issue though of... Um, you have everything up, right? But you try and just chuck out your Q. Just do your E. What you can do is, because the E slows, you can just leave the E on the ground. And then you can use that as a setup to do your Q. Yeah. So just do that. Don't just chuck out your Q. Because it's going to make it harder to lock down the Zerif if it's on cooldown. Get the shovel to do. I mean, it's a 3 to 24 game. It's a massive stomp, this. So. Yeah, like I'm a little bit confused why you guys end up losing this one because this lead is ridiculous, actually. So here, sorry. Sorry, no, it it yeah, it's my luck basically, but yeah. Oh well, we'll see. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, maybe it's not. Yeah, it's a good nearly <laughs> play. As I mentioned earlier, that this Caitlyn does need to look for a reset. Finally, kind of missed pretty bad, but it's okay. Like here, for example, like, okay, you guys, one person died as well, but you guys just need to reset once again out of the situation. And you do. Good. I mean, I'm liking so far what I'm seeing for you. Going to, into mid is the correct option. So this is, this is good still. Your movement is good. It's just a shame about binding missing there. 
Mm -hmm. Pretend it never happened. <laughs> like, like little stuff like that, I'm not going to judge, right? Like, stuff like that happens. Okay. I'm not expecting you to land every single skill tree, every single binding. Stuff happens, right? The main things I'm yeah. looking for are just you knowing where you need to be. Um, yeah. Like, vision is appropriate. Like, those two are the, the biggest things. Like, generally basic understanding of mechanics of, for example, on Lux is using E, then Q is what I'm looking for too. So far, mm -hmm. haven't really had to do a huge amount of that because it is a Yumi lane. Um, but yeah, right now, I'm seeing, like, nothing, like, like you, okay, you missed a Q on a, on a Xerath that's ulting. It's like, whatever. Like, obviously, you know you should be hitting that, but there's nothing that I can say, for example, that would make you yeah. land that. So, we're, we're not, there's no point, like, even, like, feeling bad about it or whatever. So going back into bot lane here is fine. Once again, you don't want to be left into a situation where you're by yourself. So you've identified that, so I'm happy. Okay, so that is that's that's what we were talking about earlier. So it has been <laughs> happening now a little bit too often of you just chucking out your Q instead of your E. Because if it's just your E, it's just guaranteed damage, and then you can maybe play around that. You know, she slowed then a little bit still after the E detonates, if you do decide to detonate it, um, and then you can then try and follow up a Q. But one of the things I've noticed as well that we mentioned earlier is that you keep moving forward after throwing your abilities. You're going into like melee range of them. So I want to, I want you to watch, we already know that you're going to do your Q first. I want you to watch your movement, like where you're actually moving, considering you're a ranged champion. Okay. Like here you throw your Q. You move right up to Nilia, asking to be dashed. And this has happened a few times now. And it does look like you're going to die. And you give her 900 gold. <sighs> yeah. So, and she had the treasure hunter. So because she killed you for the first time, she got an extra bunch of gold. So actually, she actually got 1,010 gold for that kill. Okay. So that is, that is probably... This is the biggest mechanical blunder. So wrong spell. You need to... I don't know what's happening here. In terms of... I think you're spam right clicking. There's something going on here with like your spam right clicking I think towards the target. Mm. That needs to stop when you're playing range because you, you there's no... After you throw out your E for example, the first thing you probably should be doing is actually like clicking backwards slightly. Okay. You don't want to move into them. You don't want, basically, the game of when you're playing something such a long range siege champion like Lux, the whole point of playing that champion is so you don't get auto hit. Okay. She's got one of the longest ranges in the game. You don't want to be auto hit by pretty much anything. Okay. So, yeah, you basically go cap, gap close that for the Nilia, and then, yeah. So, yeah, that's a bit of an oof. She also got the turret, she got to kill the Kate in there as well. At least the Kali gets to kind of clean up. Okay. So this is still going on. You can still head towards the situation. But yeah, there's nothing left to do here now. So this is super awkward for you. Because you're now in a situation where you're by yourself. And your jungle is here. I would say it kind of depends on what your jungler wants to do. If your jungle wants to contest this, I think you can. Because if you looked at the map earlier, we knew that they're Alawi and the Zara for top. So we know this would be a 2v2. So I think you could potentially do something here, but it's on your jungler if he wants to move over. If he doesn't move over, I don't want you in a 1v2 situation. Okay. You just want to play the numbers game. Like if they if you're if you're one and they're two people, you, there's no point. Yeah. Okay, good. Once again talking about the numbers. Okay, this is an interesting situation. Okay, that time it ended up being um, okay, but if you're going to play Lux, again, I really want you to get into the habit of doing E, then Q. Oh. Okay. Yeah, this is something that, that there's something that I, I taught my previous student um, last week, and Whenever you are in a situation like this, where you're entering enemy territory, at the back of your head you need to think, what's my escape plan? If things go really badly here, how do I get out alive? 
because anything could start happening, you know, the fog of war here is, is thick, anyone can come through. So, you got this kill here on the Diana, okay? So next thing is, you know, what else can I achieve by being here? Like, what are you looking to do in this situation here? Uh, probably just, like, well, like, what I should be looking to do? Should yeah, well, do basically, it? like, what... Or, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so, there isn't really anything, any reason for you to be here. The only reason why you're kind of here is because you're your jungler. But he's playing Shaco, and he has a dash, and he can just get out whenever he wants to. When he's taken out the equation, which ends up happening, because we saw it, you're literally by yourself. And that's why you need that like backup plan of what do I do if things kind of go bad here? How do I get out of this situation? And you've really kind of locked yourself into a corner. There's no blast cone to escape out of. Um, you've had many opportunities already to exit their jungle. Like here, for example, you could have made an attempt here. Like after you get this kill on Diana, like you could just be happy with the kill. Maybe you're bit worried about the Shaco being low HP, but you can see he's, he's pretty fine and you don't necessarily need to be stacking on top of him. Like here, there's you should just be looking to run away. The Shaco is not going to better help you. When anyone's this low HP, just assume that they're, basically they're dead, right? Because they okay. are going to be looking to get out themselves. So the right play would be to look our way out, getting out of the, into the river. Don't know if that will be 100% okay. possible still, but you should be looking and go, okay, there's a Nilia. My Shaco is basically dead. This is a really, really bad situation. We're really deep. I need to, we need to leave. Oh, I need to leave, right? The first thing you try and do though, is try and help the Shaco. I think at that point, you just need to let them fend for themselves because as I said earlier, they're, they're basically a dead champion at this point anyway. That Their only priority here is trying to escape, which means that's what you should be doing as well. Because what it ends up happening is, I mean, you, you had another option here to escape too. So here, for example, uh, do you know where your option is here to escape? Uh, walk with shake, like dance there. Yeah, I mean, you you know Zeraf's on this side. You know Neil is above yeah. you. You got a box here. You could have just run south here. Through this tri brush, and you would have been, you would have gotten out. Because if you look at your pathing here, you, you still got ample time here to just run to the to the right. But you chose to run deeper. You one hundred, you one hundred percent would have got out if you just ran down this way. So it's better to have that plan in your head before, it, like, you kind of need to think like at least one step forward here when you're going into enemy territory. You need to, and the one step is. If the, if things go really bad, how am I going to get out? Because otherwise you end up in this situation where you're just panicking. And you just ran into enemy territory even deeper. And there's obviously now at this point, there's no way you're going to get out. You're way too deep now. Mm -hmm. So just be careful of that. I think, I think one of the things I've noticed here is that you're not valuing your own life um, as much. Um... I saw that in the in the fact that in lane overstaying on like low health and low mana. So what else? stuff happens here? Let's see you come out into mid. So here in a situation would be a fantastic opportunity just to ward that the mid lane around here. Trying to see where the enemy team's rotating to. Really, really, really valuable ward there. So they have no one's done this dragon yet. Got control there already. You just lost your jungler though. Okay, yeah, this is an extremely awkward situation where you don't have Caitlyn. I think it's really difficult to know what to do here. I think you just kind of have to get a feel of it. You do have a massive kill lead still. So I would still be feeling rather confident. Waiting for the Caitlyn to come into this is the absolute right idea of what you should do. But you kind of need to... If these guys are pushing this, right? Okay. Let, let me know if it, if this is too much. But basically... 
in this situation here, you have two thirds, and I'm including you in here, you have two thirds of your team wanting to play for this objective, okay? Your position, you kind of decided that you didn't want that, want to take part in that, and that's a fine choice, but you can't leave this big of a distance between you and your teammates. Because at this point, the only thing you can do to overlap is ulti. You're not in a position to back them up here. And if you if your team is wanting to do something, you is basically generally you all have to kind of commit to it, or you don't. So I don't like the fact here that you got two of your teammates here trying to look a play, whereas you're just looking for an alt snipe. Whereas I think if you provide more backup here, trying to even forget about the dragon steel in com completely. To be honest with you. I'd be looking to try and back up the team. Maybe you get a couple of kills here. And then if you do manage to win this fight, okay, maybe they get dragon because you didn't, you know, because you didn't go for this attempt still. I mean, the, the odds of you getting this dragon still anyway are incredibly low. But if you get kills here, you can then look to go and do Baron. So don't get too greedy on, on the actual steal. Try and back up your teammates here. Because otherwise what's going to happen in here is like your teammates could end up dying when you could have been in it. So like, here now you're having a bit more presence. That's a good binding. It's a nice E. Would have preferred if it was the other way around. E then Q, but... I mean, your Kali's done a really, really good job finishing up. So I do wonder how much more of this fight would have been cleaned up if you were playing with them there rather than just looking for the Dragon Snipe. Does that make sense? Because say if like you manage to kill the Nilia there, it means you can go do Baron. Shaker just respawn, full HP, full help, full mana. Singe just put himself in an okay position top side. Uh, they would only have a Yumi and an Alawi left, and you know that that Baron would be potentially be yours. So don't fixate unless it's like maybe in a in a situation where it could be like Dragon Soul. But just letting them have the first dragon, like their first dragon, is like you know it's just one dragon really. I wouldn't really worry about that. To so try and play with your team in terms of if they want to contest it, join up with that. Okay, this is pretty deep. I'm not really sure what's been done here, to be honest. Ends up being one for one. Like, I can see Siege Champions as well. Like, having that water in the middle of the lane just means that you can see where they're going to be casting and when they're channeling. So, it means that you don't get caught off by the lasers as well. But generally, just always try and cover water in this mid lane, mid game onwards. Okay, resetting. Let's do like a little item check here. Your items are fine. Sorry, what was that? You're a little quiet. Maybe, sorry. They were, I don't think it was at this exact moment, but at some point I had an argument with my teammates about whether I should have gone Chemtech. <laughs> they got what? Sorry? Whether I should have gone Chemtech. Chemtech? Well, the Grievous Wounds item. I mean, if you're playing Lux, right? You shouldn't yeah. go Chemtech anyway. It would be Morello. Okay. Um... In my opinion, at least, anyway, I think like Moreno would be better, but uh... I think this is after Nyla was more fed, but I remember having <laughs> so healing wise, yeah. So healing wise, Yumi is doing healing with her her ulti and her passive heals. Nilia will probably have a little bit in her kit. She's probably got some healing items or something, yeah. And then Alawi heals for a decent chunk. Um, I wouldn't say like it's like. Giga urgent, really. Um, you guys also have three egg knights on your team, so you have grievous wounds there at least, anyway. Um, it's not like you guys have absolutely nothing. Um, Caitlyn's already got executioners now, anyway, so she's going into that. So I would argue you don't even need it now at this point. Like, if you're AD carry, okay. I mean, it's an awkward uh, buying grievous wounds on support is super awkward generally. Um, but yeah, I don't like Kentech 
I don't like that Grievous Wounds item at all. But if I had to, then I would just hold the Oblivion Orb just for the Grievous Wounds and then move on with my other items. Okay. Um, I wouldn't complete the item until, like, absolutely last item. But if your AD carry has already got Grievous Wounds, you don't need to buy it. Because then you're just overstacking on that and the stat value, what gold value on Grievous Wounds is pretty bad. It's only got value if the enemy is buying healing and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, there is an argument here that you could have Grievous Wounds, but because your teammate already has it, you got three Ignites. That's more than enough. Um, okay. So, yeah, I don't feel like you... I don't feel like... I mean, I'm not like looking at any team and going, yeah, well, the, the healing is the issue here of what these some of these things are, right? Hmm. Okay, all right. I want you to watch you, okay? Right. And then I want you to tell me what's wrong. I want you to watch you in this fight. Uh, I, I, that's two first. I know that. Um, uh, I move closer there. Okay. Uh, I so, move away from my ABC. I don't know. Okay. So the main thing. Okay. Yeah. The EQ thing. Whatever. Um, and, and the more emergency situation where someone's engaging, it's fine to use your Q as a, like a, an immediate response to something. Um, so in a panic situation, throwing at your Q is fine. Okay, I don't have a problem with that. The problem I have is when you're playing a caster, okay, you've done your Q, you've done your E and your ulti, what have you got left at this point? I think you've already done your W, you've, done, you've literally pressed all your buttons, what, what else do you have left here to offer? Auto. Also, just like nothing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, it's just auto attacks. And at this point in the game, 23 minutes in, your autos are probably doing like 50 damage. Okay. If this Nilia survives this massive burst, the first thing she's going to do is looking to jump on someone just to kill them as quickly as possible. That's a Shaker clone. Um, she's probably aware of that. So it would be you. Once you've used everything on your caster, at mid game onwards, you're basically like, you need to take a step back, wait for some cooldowns to come back on, and then you can take part again. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Because if you watch now after this, auto, the first very first auto before that was fine to destinate that you're passive, but then there's like auto, auto, you're still looking to chase for autos, and it's. Now put yourself in a situation where you've had the panic flash away from this diner. Okay? So you, you need to be really... Like, you don't need to do as many auto... Like doing the, the initial auto to detonate illumination here from your Lux passive, that's fine. Is that that auto there? That auto there, you also move a bit closer. That that That's unnecessary, like, risk as well. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. for, for To do, like, 40 damage to the enemy when they've already still got, like... 60% of their HP left, it's just, there's no reason for you to, to be there. But this new is becoming a massive problem. So once you've done your abilities, uh, you you basically just need to, the next focus after you've used all your abilities, I want you to think, how do I protect myself until I got my abilities back off cooldown? So a lot of it would just be like repositioning, just backing off slowly, like a little bit, but and, and angling yourself for a good place to fire out your next uh, key. Uh, e and then the, your next Q, for example. Um, so I want you to be thinking about more what the, of that once you've you've used your abilities. Okay, your team's kind of like running in kind of crazily. Yeah, I will say uh, I can see why your team says they need healing because uh, anti heal because this you know, is healing for quite a bit. Akai is doing a good job cleaning up though. Yeah, I think like in that situation there, as long like when the enemy is like that low HP, like here you can see like Alawi is super super HP, like it's low. As long as you're not getting slammed by his tentacles, I think in this case, like as long as you know you're safe, I think it's okay to check out auto attacks just to make sure that they can make the difference in that kind of like very very tight close situation. But I don't want you bashing on. Someone when they're still like 60% HP and you've used your full combo. Okay. Does that make sense, the, the difference there? Yeah. Okay. 
Here you need to be careful. You're kind of by yourself and the kitten is back. It's a kind of a tough decision here to recall or not. How much gold have you got? You got sub 1,700 gold. Yeah, you, you definitely need to, need to reset. So, objective spawning. You've still got the dra uh, the Baron. Dragon's up in one minute. It's kind of tough as a support to know which one to kind of ward. So, you kind of need to have this mid lane kind of warded to kind of tell, give you a heads up what the enemy team is going to want to do in terms of rotating. So just make try and get into the mission. Like this ward here is like the most important ward that you can possibly place in a game to tell you those rotations. I have never placed a mid lane ward in my life. <laughs> well, hopefully after this, it'll be there. It'll be in your mind. So yeah, but just kind of playing dodgeball right now in the mid. We have a room. Just sign. I mean, your team has a decent amount of poke. So does theirs, though. So it does make it awkward. I don't want you to be the person to force out the situation, though, because it won't be good for you. Because you're pretty squishy, and it could mean bad things pretty fast. Asin's just trying to control the map and be really annoying right now. So he's like being a distracting factor for your team. Whoa, okay, I need to follow up what just happened there. So Shake is setting up a trap. Nice catch on the Zaraf. Good reactionary ultimate. But it ends up not being in your favor at all after that. The Akali and the Shaker kind of got detonated. So yeah, kind of what we were mentioning earlier is the numbers game. And they've still got their jungler alive. Like, there's no way you get this, okay? Okay. Um... Yeah, there's literally nothing you can do to impact this dragon. It's theirs. If you go for this and you die, you're going to give them Baron. So the only thing you can, the only two things you can do is recall, reset if you've got stuff. But I think you only just reset. So you've already got. Can't tell from this, but I'm assuming you probably got most of your war charge. A good chunk of war charges still left. If you don't, then that would be an okay reason to recall to get more war charges. Um. If you have to stay on the map, it's like pushing out waves, like pushing out a mid wave that's crashing in, that's already pushed in. So honestly, it's really, really awkward for you in order to, to do anything. Um, there actually really isn't anything on the map for you to do right now. It's just a really horrible situation. I would probably look to probably concede this, look to warding around the Baron if you had spare wards at the time, uh, and then recall after that. Get your war charges back, and then by the time you've done that, Shaco and Akali would have respawned. I think that's really the only correct play here. It's kind of boring, kind of admin work, but yeah. Like this here is a no no. I admire you trying to steal these dragons, but you, 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 I think I want you to take that out of your mind right now that you could want to actively look to stealing those. You get the reset off, you're coming back. Be careful about being in lane by yourself. Okay. Same rule applies throughout the entire game. I don't want you pushing up into this situation by yourself. If this Diana has flash, for example, she'll just flash on you and kill you. Okay. I think helping here wave clear is absolutely fine. Because you don't want them to pressure your turret. Understanding your, you know, taking your time, getting vision. Don't forget you can use your E to face check for the brushes for you. If you're feeling a little bit scared, it's fine to do that. And you're just kind of waiting for a situation to arise. Now here's an interesting one. All right, so that, okay, so you've got a couple of problems here. I'm not saying that you've done anything wrong right now, but um, do you know what the issue is right now on the map? Um, well, right. Like, the issue that I would know about hypothetically in this game, because I don't, I don't know what the final four is, but like, or just in general. Just, for, for, just look at the minimap for me and, okay. and, and see if a fight breaks out, what's the problem? Uh, I, uh, Caitlyn's bot. Yeah. It's going to take an awful long time to get from there to, to the Baron. 
And these fights, these team fights, have already been kind of a bit iffy. You're going to need her for the fight, basically. Okay. So in this situation, you want to slow it down. You don't want to be forcing anything. Um, you always get, are going to be at a person. It's a numbers game, essentially, again. Shaker is also quite far away. I mean, he can make it here a bit quicker than Caitlyn, but it's still basically a three. The three at the moment, but it's gonna it is you know it's not gonna be it be a five v five because you Caitlyn's bot. So at best, you're praying that some of the enemy doesn't show up. So if you're able to look into the mini map and see straight away, like oh yeah, my AD, like we've got one person bot that's not gonna be able to be taking part in the fight at all. That's when you play a little bit more on defense. If your teammates are rushing in, I still in the back of my mind saying like, you know, we're probably going to lose this fight if we commit anything here. So if Akali ends up dying because of it, then so be it. Just, you're going to have to let her die because you know you're going to lose this fight anyway. Otherwise, it's just going to end up being you dying and then someone else dying and then it's going to cost you the game, okay? So you need to be very careful about this kind of situation that's uh, about to arise here if something does happen at the Baron. The difference between this and like the dragon fight earlier in the game, like very early on in the game. Sorry, your microphone is kind of muffling. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, Kate. Yeah. Okay. So, like the the dragon fight, I'm just trying to like conceptualize it. The dragon fight in the earlier parts of the game. Did you like if you remember, you said that I was too far back and I could only provide help with my ultimate. Yes. Versus like this where it's like the numbers are, are sort of the same but back then was it just that like the gold difference was more massively skewed towards us and that they were also getting hit by the dragon okay so i'm, I'm still or... saying like here for example you're going to want to commit to stuff but i want you to be playing I like think... in a defensive mindset that you have a way out if you need to okay you can't just for example you're near this akali right and you're near your singed mm -hmm. if they go in i still want you to look to try and provide some source of backup here but i don't want you to like absolutely go super deep here where you might not be able to get out okay. see but if you once again if you look a quick glance on the minimap you have shaco top you have caitlin bot you will only have these players here to play around with you're luckily playing a really long range champion. So you can use that range advantage to, you know, poke at a distance if you have to. But you can do that safely. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. So yes, you can yes, your team is making a play here potentially. Yes, you're near enough to follow up on it, but I don't want you like I want you to prioritize your health as well at the same time. So yes, look to, to throw a W over on. Yes, look to throw out an E and then a Q. Maybe an ulti as well, because the range on that is obviously massive. But don't look to be very aggressive here. Don't be the one in particular. The most important thing is don't be the one here to actually look like to be the one initiating this either. Because ideally, you know, on the map, Akai should be looking where the positioning of her teammates are before this play even happens. So this goes for you like when you're playing anything like if you are looking to make a big play here late into the game know where your teammates are and if you're actually going to get some follow up here because if we do fog of war the only person you can see here is diana you don't know where the rest of the team is it's pretty kind of scary um you know, if we had a ward in the mid lane here we might be able to get some tiny bit more information to see if the enemy has rotated up the top or not so you can see if they're positioning in that kind of area if you did have a ward in that lane, you would have seen Alawi's moving up to kind of like pressure this area. So you would have the intel there, but here you do throw the W. Diana misses a uh, staff. You chuck the ulti here. At this point, Nui is looking for a play. I'd be like, okay, I need to get out. You've already done a lot of, you've already done enough. But I want you to prioritize your health here. I don't know what happens in this fight, but yeah, I just want you to prioritize your health and you do. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you... I don't, I don't really have anything much to say. Like, I don't, I think you played okay, considering the circumstances that were given you and the, the, the fact that your team went in the way they did. 
but that was just like a little crash course on like theoretical stuff that's going to happen in the mid game to late game that I want you to think of and if you're maybe playing a different champion when not to engage essentially and the information that's there on the minimap to tell you not to go in but yeah I think this new year is starting to kind of take over the game a little bit she's definitely been a pain point I think your team's making lots and lots of different mistakes here and stuff. I want to go into this Nami game because okay. how much time do you have? Uh, I have until I have like another 40 minutes. Okay. Is it this? So I don't know how much time you have. I got enough time. It's fine. Which one was it? Was it this Nami game? Uh, the... no, oh, no, it was a loss, uh, wasn't it? Zero, zero, <laughs> zero ten. ten. Yeah. Okay, I want to well. try and help you more in laning phase because the problem is with laning is that Yumi is the laning phase yeah. stuff. But I know we've identified some points in the Lux gameplay, at least anyway, where yes. basic mechanic thing, EQ, the moving too close when mm -hmm. you're doing the abilities, yeah. you... Um, I was stay. Need to link up with your yeah. AD carry in terms of pushing waves potentially as well, but we didn't really get to see much of that in the actual lane itself. Uh, but here we'll, we'll kind of see now, like if that is if some of these things are a recurring thing. This is the advantage we have of looking at two games is that we can see what mistakes are commonly happening. So yeah, okay. Once again, happened in the first game. Perfect, by the way. You're leveling up bubble. You're not like just coming out of lane, like so many people, your elo, I see just, they just level W when they're in fountain and then just move out, right? You're doing this fantastic, so keep this up. This is my favorite bubble I've ever thrown. Yeah, that's, that's a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I mean, here you just reset. You just got to recall as quickly as possible if you need to in terms of health. I probably would just to get the extra 100 health. I would have done the recall okay. about 10 seconds ago and just get the extra 100 health for free. Um, you guys come into the lane. So what is it? Nilia, Nami versus the Zaya Zeref. So you're up against like a quite a little bit of a pokey lane. Zeref's obviously going to be a pain point. Enemy okay. All right. Okay. So here, because you didn't have any wards in your in your jungle, which is not the end of the world, but here, watching the enemies come down here like this. When they come out any second, any second. here like that. Like that's such a weird place to come out. The only reason they would come out this way is because they've been they set themselves on auto path from coming out of your blue, and it means that they've been hugging this wall. So that should tell you straight away that they probably invaded. So you need oh, to. Is, does that make I sense? Kind of know that. Well, they did. They, they they did look like they were pushing in your jungle. Like if I push, if I you know if I hide all vision, only red team. So we, we kind of know, but this this gives you that information. Like they, okay, they they like okay. ninety nine percent because you haven't got any vision here, so you can't tell exactly. Like they, they could have easily have gone back into their own jungle. Okay. Okay. Because you don't have that vision here, but them coming out of this brush like like this increases those odds like dramatically because then you know they, they haven't had they haven't had to go back to pull for red does that make sense okay yes so at that point you go okay i would ping this i'd say like the the red uh the blue buff sorry i say look they they probably stole and then also red flag um for you is like okay so jarvin just did our blue probably he can gank bot really early we need to be playing really far back so that would be my my indication here would be like, okay, we might actually get level two ganked here by Jarvan. We don't want that happening. I'm just going to watch you actually in terms of mechanics in the lane. I think you were doing a good job auto attacking here. Auto. Yeah. Yeah. You're definitely more proactive than most people in your elo in terms of auto attacking in lane. I think that's okay. It's just very difficult because you haven't got heal level one because of yeah. the bubble. So you're just kind of waiting for that. Yeah, it's just very difficult because of the, the lack of the sustain. I don't think there's anything really right. Now when you get level two, then you're probably looking at, you know, probably just healing the... Okay. Uh, 
okay. I think that was a bit of a che- <laughs> that was a cheeky heal bounce. I think I'd be more panicked <laughs> about like the Neil is getting too low HP, so you don't want to risk it. Okay, good. This is just just an awful start to the lane, unfortunately. Seraph is a ghost. Ghost flash, okay. But yeah, I would just awesome. be doing the same as you're topping up this near you as much as possible as a right pain. They used heal. There's really nothing you can do here right now. It is literally just W spam. Okay. What? Well, okay. I think I really just wanted to poke them for some reason. I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you want to get the gold charges, you want to get the mana flow band stacks, but generally it's just, you know, you're going to have to spend a lot of your mana. mana Wing the new year and that's what you've done but now you're kind of free up from the turret um so you got two options here it's to recall which is you know as we talked about earlier in the last game you weren't necessarily getting to do enough this could be an okay recall timing because of how low the new year is um option two is staying in the lane so if you're going to stay in the lane you need to look at a couple of things there's two things um, that you need to be paying attention to. Do you know? Do you want to take a guess at what one of those two things are? Um, yeah. Wave state? Uh, vision as like where the enemy jungler might be? That was two things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in terms of, I mean, you already know what the ways, there's a ward here. Which is nicely placed, so you know that Jarvan isn't playing any tricks around here. Um, the two things I personally would be looking at is resources on enemy players. So I'm looking at this Zaref and I'm looking at this Zaya. I can see that this Zaref has no no mana. He's going to be really struggling now to keep up the amount of harassment that he has already been doing in lane. So he really isn't as much of a threat now. Zaya also mm -hmm. is entering into that same situation where she's running out of mana as well. So if you wanted to stay in this lane, the biggest threat would be the Jarvan doing a gank, like you mentioned. Um, but actually in the 2v2 now, it isn't that scary. They don't have any... They've already used the heal. They haven't got any ignites or exhaust or anything like that. I would argue there's a, actually a strong case here that you can kind of overstay a little bit um, if the new year stays. The second thing I'd be looking at is where my jungler is. So the first thing you're looking at the resources on the enemy players, they're having to overextend a lot pushing into your turret. Your jungler is on your side of the map and he has nothing left to do on this side. So his next course of action, he's he's going to be looking into this river to get the scuttle or to potentially make a play on bot lane. So mm -hmm. I would be encouraged to stay in the lane because you might be able to catch these guys off guard overextending and getting a little bit too carried away from harassing. Do you remember in the Lux game how I mentioned about people staying on low HP and being baited into stuff? Yeah. This is this has happened but for you now. I think you okay. could potentially if you can communicate to your jungle like I mean there's already been an on the way ping actually as I mentioned it. There's an on the way ping so that that play is probably going to be looking to happen at least anyway. So yeah, I'd be looking to stay in the stone. So those are the two things I'm looking at in this kind of like awkward situation is resources on enemy champions and where your jungler is. If my jungler wasn't here, I would be a bit more hesitant to stay in the lane because it would mean less power on the map. Does that make sense on your side? Yeah. 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 So that's like generally what I should be looking for in awkward recall situations. Yeah. So like if, if they're... If, say for example, you got a champion, if your AD carry wants to stay in this situation and the enemy's out of mana, the odds of your AD carry dying just go, go, like, go, the odds of them dying go down dramatically, if that makes sense. It's, un, it's um, a lot more unlikely that they're going to die because they literally can't throw any abilities out to, to look to kill them. Uh, and they can be baited into a situation where they can be actually ganked. Okay. And also you heal on Nami, so you can slowly top up this deal, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like, as I said here, Ramus is now looking for a play. That's a flash. Maybe we can get another flash. Would have been nice for the Zaya switch, uh, to the Zara switch, but... Bubbles fine. Uh, I mean, oh, yeah. you die for it. I think that's, like, not the end of the world. I, I think that that's fine. 
Okay. Okay. Right, quiz time. <laughs> <laughs> from what you've learned from the Lux game, what should you do now? Um, like after I respawn, because she's low, I should look for look towards mid to ward or to make a play. Yeah, and why is that? Uh, because she's gonna recall pretty soon, and then I'm gonna and Zaya and Zareth are also recalled, so it's not. It, then I'm gonna be. It's gonna be a two v one, and that's not really that cool. And then also, Ram is just like gank, so the the possibilities of him being down here are also really low. Yeah, I mean, you're so, le yeah, you're learning. So yeah, absolutely. You should be looking around mid to see if you can't gank, like if Twisted Fate ends up recalling, or if you know this is quite a difficult lane to help out on. Um, you're just here to put down a ward and then go back into bot, because by then hopefully Neil will be almost back into lane once you've done that. Also, you know, you don't really know where the enemy Jarvan is, so, you know, Ramus is looking to potentially, ca like, go for the scuttle here too. So, you, you know, there could be a, a, something happening in this river as well. So, mm -hmm. that you basically just want to be somewhere where, where there is something happening and you don't want to be by yourself. So, you're absolutely correct in everything you said there. So, you want to be looking to go into... Okay, you knew you just died. You want to be going to where something's happening. I think, so you always want to path down this middle bit. Because then you can break away into mid or into bot. And you only waste about like a few seconds of your t time going this way. Whereas if you dedicate yourself going straight into bot lane, it takes a lot longer to get into mid if you need to react quicker. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you always want to generally path down this way at least. Here, for example, you knew you died, and now Ramus is engaging bot. So if I would actually probably carry on walking going down this river here and looking to see if there's like something I can maybe do, maybe path this way actually rather than. Um, but yeah, you, you at this point you probably would want to maybe look at coming into bot because you won't be by yourself because there's Ramus there. Here, Ramus should be looking to try and take some of the CS. You getting that kind of minions cool. But are you in this situation, you being here is fine because Ramus is here. Okay. But now he okay. So now he's not here. Okay, here, you, Ramus is walking away. If you get okay. caught, he can't back you up. Okay. Here, you're kind of getting a little bit too overextended here. Look how deep you're going into them in the 2v1 situation. If you get caught here, it's going to take a long time for these guys to come and help you. So you need to be careful about that still. Like Technically, you were left alone there for like a few seconds. Looking to re-engage. This is looking good. You've moved up straight away. You've noticed that. Bubble's okay. I would have liked it on the overlap on um, the taunt if possible. But that's fine. Everything there was fine. Okay, same situation here. You need to be helping push in this wave. Neo is pushing in this wave by herself. You need to kind of accommodate that and help. Okay. And then here, looking for a recess, absolutely fine. You push in this wave. There's nothing for you to do down here. Dragon's not being done. You know, you've got half mana, 60% health. Nia's like 25% mana. It's perfect time to recall because these guys have to deal with these minions under the turret. There's literally nothing else for you to do. Both of you should be recalling here. And you do. Okay, good. Hmm. Okay. So you get poked down here, which sucks. I would just say, like, just dub yourself here. Just don't overthink about it. Don't look to try and maybe harass. Just top yourself up. Because this is going to happen a lot in this lane against poke, right? You're going to get constantly sieged down. It's like a war of attrition, basically. You need to keep top yourself up. Um, you're basically combating against the Xerath's mana pool. As soon as he goes out of mana, he's useless. Same with you, but... If, if it's just, if the Xerath's cut out completely, you've got better mana regeneration than the Xerath anyway. 
Yeah, just be very, very careful about being poked down. If I were you, I wouldn't even... Because you're getting against double poke, doing something like this is not worth the trade because if you do get caught out, Zeref, uh, Zion landed the feathers back onto you. You're now taking a Zeref Q. Like the trade there for you moving up just to do one W on this Zion, you did 10% damage to her and it cost you 50% of your life. Okay. okay. So be very careful about these high damage like siege trades. Um, you are generally going to have to play further back. Nami's range is pretty short. Usually you have to use another target to extend the range. So for example, like using the Nilia to then get the W poke off if you need to, or giving the Nilia the E in order to do stuff. Does that make sense? You can't put yourself in a situation there where you can just get blasted for free. So here, the health, the, the re like, so we're doing like a resource check every now and then. So you guys are like much lower in health than the enemy. They're really healthy. They've got lots of mana. You're playing on defense. You're weaker than, than them. There's no way that you're going to be able to get a kill down here. So just hang back, top up when needed, um, and just take it easy. You got to remember also against playing like a mage like the Zaref, he has to get kills. If he goes even in this lane, if this lane goes 0-0, zero, zero, you've won. Zeref without kills, same with Zyra, same with Brand. If they don't get kills in lane, they are useless. So if you're able to play this lane, just if it ends up being 0-0, zero, zero, you win. So this TF popped ulti, but gave you guys no warning whatsoever. I would not blame, that's not your fault at all. That was a very optimistic TF play. Okay. I'm just gonna get vision here. I wanna try and see what happens here with their team. Because TF popped his ulti. This isn't a classic example of what, what you don't wanna do. Like this Sire is recalling by herself and has left the Xerath by himself. I don't know why they've done that, and that's a complete disaster move for them. You can't tell that's happened though. It's such a weird recall. I think by now you probably would have indicated that Zaya's like off the map because she isn't here last hitting at this point. And then here straight away, you would have seen that Jarvan is now invading. So this is like a prime opportunity for your team to take over because you'll have numbers advantage. So you got the 1v1 here with the Ramus versus Jarvan. Zaya's all the way back here. I'd even argue Twist of Fate, we have way bigger numbers advantage because of Twist of Fate. So you want to react straight away and help out here. Which I hope you do, and yeah, you do. Popping your ulti is fine. Bubble is fine. Okay, good. Yeah, I don't know. That's hopefully like me going through that kind of explains like on the map of why like some like th things like shouldn't be happening. Like that Jarvan should not be doing that when his mid laner has recalls, and his AD carry had recalled too. So that does leave you guys an opportunity now to do dragon. But you guys did commit, you commit a lot of resources at least for that. Falling up here is fine, it's a one for one trade. Same rule applies, you don't want to be left alone, so yeah, just doing this is fine. Absolutely fine. Ward over the wall is fine. Just need to... This is messy. Okay, yeah, don't... Okay, this health here, when you know that they have such a big siege here with the, with the Ramus, and yeah, like, don't, don't look to help. I think you back bailing off here was fine. Like, you running away here is absolutely fine. You, you're out of the fight now. You're, you're, you're done, okay? You have to just leave. You cannot re-enter any sort of fight whatsoever here now, too. Like, you're, you're... Yeah. I don't like you doing this because now you're wasting time because now technically you're kind of dead anyway but it also means that you're dead for longer because you're bouncing backwards and forwards but not able to do anything just hit the recall button get back in, uh, into the fountain go buy what you need get your health back up and then come back on the map and then be able to do something 
I know it only seems like maybe five five to ten seconds of you interrupting your recall, but that could like mess up timings on anything. Anything can happen in that time. So, what is that? Sorry, the microphone's playing up. Sorry, I, I I literally just said like I used to be a lot worse at that. Used like, to be a lot more like, what? Sorry. I used to be a lot worse, like bouncing back and forth between whether I should recall or not. Ah, uh, okay. You used to bounce more between back and forth. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a common thing I see, particularly as I said in bronze. But honestly, your, the gameplay that I'm seeing with the mechanics overall, yes, there have been, you know, particularly in the Lux game where you. You started doing doing your your Q plus E. You kind of move forward a lot into like melee range when you are playing a range champion. Um, like cutting out some of those issues, making sure that you are looking to play like here for example. I didn't mention it, but like this, this is what I want you to do. Pretty much every time you're looking okay. when you're re resetting by yourself, like you know that the Nilia is by. You could potentially end up like if she gets poked down heavily here, she might want to recall and then you'd be by yourself. Like looking for an avenue here where you can help mid if you need to. This is ideally what I want you to be doing like most of the time. Coming out of base, okay. no matter what you're playing, really. Because it just gives you that flexibility okay. to be able to react to mid if you need to. Um... But I'm not really like in terms of like laning stuff, there isn't like that many glaring issues. You've taken like one or two kind of oof trades here and there. And I think the other thing is, is you just need to work on is just recall just recalling. You stay out in the field for a little bit too long, and in a lot of games I can see you dying from it. Yeah, he's doing a lot of the work here. Very quick ulti. I like that reaction there. As soon as she goes down, yeah, that's pretty oof. I'm just all right, I'm gonna watch this one in terms of mechanic standpoint. I, I in terms of bronze, I'm I'm happy with that. You, the first thing I would tell someone is that you know you just whack down your ulti down straight away, and you kind of did that. So I'm happy in terms of like that kind of mechanical point that you did that. Like the ulti here is good. Like the Zaya's ult is is pretty on point here too. To be fair. New Year kind of just goes and commits and just dies for it. If you, yeah, I mean that's not really on you. I, I can't judge you. I think you what you did in that situation was absolutely fine. I think Zaya played that really well with her ulti. I think New Year kind of entered it a little bit. Okay. Coming back into the lane with your AD carry, good. TF popping ulti, but yeah. Okay. Right. So we got an interesting situation here. So you guys have come back into the lane. And um, do you know what the enemy team hasn't done? The enemy bot lane? Recall? Yeah, so what does that mean? Which means that they don't get a chance to like spend the gold that they just earned. Exactly, so yeah. what you want to do in this point is you can kind of salvage the double death that you you guys had by keeping them in the lane as long as possible so they don't actually spend that gold. And I think that's what Neo tried to do. But you should be okay in terms of just topping the new year back up over time and then looking to like try again here because they haven't got the gold, as you said, and Xerath's also low on resources as well. So I would be looking to see if if there's any chance here to keep them in the lane as long as possible. Xerath's ghost and Sire healed first. But I would be looking to go like, can we do something to keep them here? Yeah, I mean, it's not really your fault. I mean, so I mean, it's just this new is taking like every single Xerath queue. I feel like you're doing okay. It's quite frustrating me for as a coach because it's like. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. I do know that there are some glaring mistakes that I made while not respecting Jarvan. 
I mean, using the ulti to kind of panic a bit there, it's, it's like it's okay. It's not like I'm not going to judge you on that either. W. Should have probably e the Ramus sooner there, but I don't think it would have changed anything in that. Yeah, it's just... Okay, one thing I don't want you doing is this. Is once again kind of valuing your own life, right? In this situation here, mm -hmm. no one on the enemy team is going to die. Okay. There's and at this point in the game, you're in 14 minutes past now. Don't look to harass. Okay. Once laning phase is over, playing any enchanter support by any form of harassment is like you you don't you're not going to do that anymore. You need to get out of the mindset of I need to poke all the game. Like at this point here is you're playing on a back line. Don't look to W harass. Um, if the fight is if you're in the middle of a team fight, then that's slightly different. But looking to like here, I'm watching you here. I guess you're just trying to focus on dodging, but I don't like how you're moving into them. This kind of reminds me of the Lux game where you kind of got caught off. Do you remember? And you kind of like pushed into them and panicking. Yeah. So you, you kind of need to to be aware of where are the safe spaces here because you are putting yourself in really dangerous situations there where, you know, Xeras popped his ulti. You should not be moving into the enemy team. You kind of need to find that movement where, like you've already taken that first circle. Just keep kind of moving into that, that direction because that was really close to you dying there just from that alone. Just watching here. Okay, one thing I'm noticing a little bit is that you're not casting your E quite quick enough when you're doing your W. Like, prioritizing your W is fine, but just tap your E quickly as well. It's like here should be W, then a quick E, but you still got your E, and then you kind of use it like a, a one and a half seconds later. And the second, that the, the millisecond you used it on her, she died. So she got like no benefit from it at all. Okay. I have no that noticed that like once before, but I thought it was just minor, but now it's starting to see like don't just W, E them as well if you're able to. Try not to like stagger it. Okay. Especially when that or that, that get them to use the charges like as quickly as possible. The the, the extra damage charges and slows and stuff. Once again if able to get the like, ward in the middle of the lane, pretty valuable stuff. Let's try to see what happened here. Riven came from behind. I think I saw that. Yeah, Riven came behind. I mean, at this point, is this just a mechanical thing? Right, so the Riven's doing a smart little play here. She's found the flank avenue. At this point, you should better see her. Yeah. You've got a flash up. Like, as soon as she flashes here, do you know where you should... should we, well... I've already kind of given away. You need to flash and react to this straight away. But do you know where you need to flash to? The um, like flash backwards or to the like one of them. Can you explain the reasoning for either of them? Uh, well, flashing to the right is like flashing farther away from her in the short term and flashing backwards means that like she already like flashed forwards if I flash backwards I can go back like towards my turret I just worry that it might put me closer to her range but I guess it doesn't really matter so I probably should just flash that way okay I don't want to flash forwards into their team yeah exactly you don't want to flash forward that'll obviously do the same thing but you want to flash to your right because Ta -da. This guy, little guy, oh, can wait. save you. <laughs> so yeah, this is why you need to kind of pay attention and try not to get too fussed by, you know, even, even like, you know, you're not in the game right now. You had the freedom to look at the minimap. So that tells me that you're probably not looking at the minimap as not enough as you probably should be. Mm. Because yeah. even for us just sitting here, you know, you should have been able to pick up to look on the minimap to see if there's some one to flash to, not just somewhere, right? If you flash to the right, yes, you are a further point away from the ribbon, like you said. But it will mean that this little guy here can save you. Okay. Okay. 
So don't hold the flashes. If you're getting jumped like that, try and flash into a direction where you're going to be safe. So if you were at least sort of relatively paying attention to where people were on the mini map, you would get a gist of an idea like Ramus is to myself. I can kind of like go into that direction mm -hmm. or to my east too. Really. So the flash hasn't happened yet. It's a good ulti disengage. It's per it's perfect because it goes across the whole team. It's not like you're panicking like ulting just north because if you only throw it north, it's only going to hit one. Whereas it stops them from following up. So I really like that ulti that you did. Bubble, bubble follow up is there is good. You do then get to flash afterwards. But uh, my main concern would be is like this river. And I would I. I know in this it didn't seem like you needed the flash. I think you're kind of lucky not to get hit by that Zeref Q, but it could have been a lot worse than this. I would have liked you just to to, to known to to flash straight away towards this Ramus and then play it from that kind of angle. Um, I think the situation ended up being a lot better than even I thought it would go, but it's still not great for your team though, overall. You, like, you lost two for one, but I think if you flash in this direction as well, it probably makes it a lot more awkward for this Jarvan to even get to you in the first place anyway. Because then they kind of have to fight through this Ramus that's in this corridor. So that makes sense because you'll be positioned here and then Ramus would actually be in front of you. Then they have to play front to back rather than you being in the actual front line. Just a bunch of stuff happening here. Just constant fight, 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 fight. I like the bubble ambition there. You can't stick around anymore. I wouldn't even... I would not stick around. I would replenish what I would do if I were you I'd replenish a ward here in the mid somewhere. Try and maybe put a ward in this brush here and then look to reset again. So you kinda came out of base with four war charges. You didn't plant it down a single ward and you gone back to base. So I like every time before you recall, ideally you're just putting down a ward. Even if even if it was just to refresh this one back up to full. Like just do that. Does that make sense? Because you just you, the amount of vision that you're having on the map is 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 becoming less and less right now because you haven't replenished any wards in a long time now. Um, let's try. All right, let's have a look at this fight. Okay. Um, I think ulti starting off. I'm happy with what you're doing every single time in terms of ulti. Kind of, I mean, yeah, it's a good job in ulti. I mean, this the players that you're playing against feel higher than, as you said, these are the silver, right? It definitely feels higher than bronze. That is just, honestly, that is just really well played to them. Like, there's a job in ulti and three of inside, three people inside for the Xerath ulti. That is like, at that point, I can tell that's already, that's probably the game at that point, because that is such a devastating blow. That is, yeah. That it's very hard to come back from that. Right, it has been like an <laughs> nearly two hours, isn't it? An hour and fifty minutes, I think. Um, is there any like kind of questions that you want to ask at all? Uh, Your microphone's kind of gone off again. Great. Um. I guess with with like I general itemization, I guess you I, I watched a game on Nami where your entire team was like AD and you went staff of flowing water for the AP ratio. Mm -hmm. And that kind of like really you you said because you liked it on, on you and the team wasn't playing with you, but you still had like AD people playing with you, so mm -hmm. I like like your your mid and ADC who were like AD ish like who were like the main like auto attacking champions I guess what which I guess makes sense because I think Ardent is like an on hit item but it still confused me a little bit. Okay, so That's I don't like I don't know question. what specifically game that was. Do you remember the team compositions at all? Like, do you remember like what I had <laughs> on my team? Do you remember the AD carries there were? Uh, I have to check my watch history. Um. I, 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 I remember it was a Nami game, 
specifically. If you okay, I so didn't... if you remember, send me a DM and I'll reply the response. Okay. But generally, like, if you have ardent sensor, is very okay. So it's one of those items that multiply stats. So it increases the attack speed of the target that you give, right? So mm -hmm. it works really well on champions like Cogmore, like Vayne, like don't, pretty much anyone that, that auto hits. But it's A, it's a mid to late game item. Mm -hmm. uh, and B, if your AD carry is bad, then you're going to get very little usage out of that item. I'm not a fan of Ardent, but I will pick it up if I've got a hyper carry like the Vayne and the Cogmore. I will pick it up if like I have like a Kindred jungle or something like that. Um, you won't see me picking it up even if I have a auto attacking AD carry if I deem that they're not going to be actually using the item because that item doesn't benefit, will only benefit like what journey one person in a game. I am not going to benefit much from the attack speed. My so if I've got a Syndrome Mint, it's not going to be benefiting from that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Staff of Flame Water gives flat AP to yourself from the proc. So that's obviously a plus. But also it gives flat AP to everyone else on your team. Right. Now, generally, okay. most people on your team have some sort of AP ratio as well. So they're going to benefit more from that than attack speed. Okay. So it I could found have, the, yeah. we, we found the game, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you think so it's it was? It was, yeah. Um, it was. You're you're explaining it, and it, it like it made intuitive sense, but it's still like something that I would not have done. So it was just like. What was my indie carry? My indie carry was Jin, I think. Jin, yeah. So and Jin's a perfect the, example. Akali, where, yeah. I think you said like the Akali and the Jin weren't playing on Hue, so you were like. So was it was to... was it Akali mid? I think, I think it was this. Yes. Yeah, so Akali doesn't benefit from Ardent Sensor. She would benefit from self employing Water. Jin is a unique situation where he's like literally the least attack auto attacking champion in the AD carry pool. He's only got those four shots. Yes, he gets a tiny bit of AD scaling from attack speed, but it's from Ardent, it's not great at all. Um mm -hmm. let me just have a look at the other the barriers. Just going through my that video that you linked. So that was is it a cane and a jack? So I did have a jack. So Jax could have benefited from the Ardent, but I'm not going to be seeing that Jax until a really long time anyway, since he's playing top. So mm -hmm. there's no real need to like rush for the Ardent. In that case, a property, if Jax was doing well, you could definitely make the argument, okay, like I'm going to go Ardent to help out this Jax carry the game. Um, so the, the three items that you, you can buy on Nami like second, so you've got your Staff of Flame Water, you've got like a Shrillias or the Imperial Mandate or whatever, but like the, then it's, then that extra item is like Staff of Flame Water, Ardent Sensor or Redemption. So Redemption is the, the, the most generic out of all of them because everyone on the team can benefit from that, from the extra healing rate. Right? The downside of buying Redemption though when playing Nami is that the AP ratios are basically non-existent. Um, if you're going Echoes of Helia, you get a tiny bit more of AP from that because you get more AP based on mana regeneration that you pick up and Redemption is a slightly bit more. But anyway, the point is is that Reden Gen uh, Redemption is generically good for everyone. If you're ever not sure between those three items, I would just generally just go then, say, just go Redemption if you're not sure. Okay. Staff of Flame Water is just generically, generically good for you. So you know you're always going to get some sort of benefit from that. If you've got like an AP mid that's doing really, really well or something like that, then it's even better. Uh, in that regard, it's like a multiplier for them because if they got like a death cap, then, you know, if you're giving them X amount of AP from Staff of Flame Water, the death cap then does like, is it 30% more AP on top of that? So it's just more and more scaling there too. Um, but yeah, always think of Ardent Sensor as just that multiplicative item. If your AD carry is doing zero damage, you're timesing that by... <laughs> that Ardent Sensor could do a million, right? But if, it, if the, the yeah. AD carry is zero, you, you're going to get zero. So that's the way you should think about that. I don't like Ardent overall, but yeah. Remember you saying something about that, like Yumi, or about like Yumi and Lulu as a champion or whatever. Like, yeah, like Yumi, yeah. 
Because yeah, zero yeah. times a hundred is still zero. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So like Yumi, Lulu, um, Milio to some regard as well. Uh, but Lulu, Lulu in particular is a champion where it's like she's got all of these extra attack speed steroids, which is great. But like if you AD carry can't use them, then you 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 generally plan half a champion at that point, and that's just not a short joke. <laughs> so yeah. Um. I, I like Lulu. You kind of got a little bit quiet again on the microphone. Sorry. Yeah, it's just it's like saying, like, I, I like Lulu, can't play her in rank yet. Yeah, she's, I wouldn't, at your ELO, I definitely would not recommend playing that, to be honest. But yeah, some of the some of the points I think that you can definitely work on, which I think you will see an instant improvement on. I think the top three things are, out of everything, is look to getting that ward in the mid lane. That's going to make realms better for you, not just for you, but for your team in terms of seeing rotations. So try and get that mid lane ward going as often as possible. B mechanics and fight. I want you to. So when you're playing like the locks, for example, or any caster, right? Once you've used your abilities, the only thing you've got left is auto attacks. And outside very early stages of laning phase, shutting down auto attacks is like really, really low value, but extremely like high risk. You should be once you've used your abilities. I want you to think about repositioning first more than anything to set yourself up. Whether you, you use that time to kind of like analyze the fight, like are you guys winning the fight? Or are you not winning the fight? If you're winning it, then you can kind of put, position yourself aggressively next for when your next abilities are off cooldown. If you guys are kind of losing the fight, then you need to kind of backpedal a bit and then look to kind of push the enemy away from you as much as possible by kiting them back. If that makes sense. Um, third one is, I think the most one of the most laning things for you is recall timings. I'm on the Lux game in particular. I'm not happy of how long you guys are staying in lane with the amount of gold you are. I think you're taking a lot of unnecessary risks, um, and I don't think you're valuing your life enough. So recalls need to come a little bit more often. Communicate with that with your AD carry. You've got a lot of gold in your pocket. Just, you know, as you saw, just pressing the recall button and seeing that animation can make your AD carry think, yeah, okay, I need a recall as well. Okay. okay. And that kind of like 0. 0.3.5, you know, valuing your own death is like when you are overextending into deep areas like we saw on the Lux here, for example, if you are going deep, value your own life, think about an exit strategy if things go really bad. Like you don't want to put yourself cornered in these like weird locations and getting caught off when you're going that deep because when you're going into this enemy territory, it's really difficult to get out if if they've shown up if you don't have flash to go over a wall. So you need to kind of think about those angles of, okay, the safest place is you know, so and so is here. I can run to them more. I've got an exit point here which I know is safe, rather than getting lost and then just adventuring into like the enemy's jungle. Um, okay. so yeah. do you have any questions on that uh, I don't think I have any more questions I have five pages of notes now five, yeah that's the thing that's why I like doing those little summaries at the end those are the main ones I want you to think about I did record this session um, okay. so you can if you want I can upload it as a private video so only you can watch it so that you have that information for you um, yeah. if you don't mind, I might put it up onto YouTube as a, as a coaching session kind of thing, if that's okay. It's up yeah, to you then. That's fine by me. Okay. I'm, that's Thank fine you. by me. As long as the title isn't trash. So oh, no, no, I've never done that. If you look <laughs> I, at me. No, I, I, yeah. I, I, I watch your videos a lot. So. My name is not Aoki. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, those are like the main kind of like three points I want you to focus on. I think if you if you do those three things, I think you'll be silver in no time. But what, what was it that you bronze three? Yeah, I brought well, you bronze I, three. I last last like I talked to you, I was bronze three, and I'm still bronze three, but I play four games, and now I'm almost bronze two. So like bronze two, right? Yeah, yeah I, 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 keep... I I think you will climb fast like in terms of getting to silver as long as you. Do the things that, that I mentioned there in those three points there. 
I mean, obviously, there's been other things like mechanical things, like unlocks in terms of doing like EEQ. I will say I've seen plat Lux players do Q than E. It's so frustrating seeing people like that and that kind of ELO is still doing it. People make these mechanical errors all the time. It's more about, um, you know, and we saw like, you know, failed your Lux Q on a Xerath old thing. Like stuff happens. It's just, the, it's mainly decision making at this point and just making sure that I'm not saying like being passive or anything, but just valuing valuing your own life and also just staying on the same kind of decision making as your team. Mm -hmm. um, understanding that a situation is risky is fine, and playing a more defensive part is fine. But you need to, if a team's remember with the locks when you altered for the dragon, for example. I think that again. Try not to focus on necessarily the objective itself when you're playing support focus on trying to back up teammates in in a situation and if you okay. think it's risky you can take part you can throw down abilities but do it in a safe way like you're playing mages and enchanters right so you can do that in a safe way if you were playing a hard engage i'll probably be saying lots of different information for you but um since you're playing casters that's how you want to play casters you want to understand this is risky you know don't have a jungler they're doing dragon but my team wants to kind of commit for it still i will be here but i'm gonna play safe right because mm -hmm. what if what will happen is if you don't turn up to those areas those guys are still gonna die anyway but two things will happen they'll get tilted and start blaming you because you didn't help right okay. and it's just gonna make them play worse anyway but b it also means on the small chance that something good does end up coming from it that you do manage to get a single pick uh, it means that you can maybe do an objective on the map anyway. It doesn't have to be the one that you're contesting or looking to like fight around either, but it could mean that, you know, you killed their jungler, got a lot of them low. You could maybe go do like a herald or a bound or something or get down like a tier one turret. It could be anything, right? That makes sense. Okay, that was, yeah, that was a long one. I felt like I had to, like, that's not your. You know, I felt like we, it was worth going into another game because I wasn't happy with um, how much information I was giving you in terms of it was. I think probably the main for me in terms of like future coaching is probably because of the Yumi lane. Um, I think the Yumi lane kind of made it hard to give out information because it's a Yumi lane. There's nothing really to talk yeah. about, unfortunately. So, um, but I, I hope. The points I made weren't too overwhelming because it was a really long. I don't like it when the sessions get too long because it's too much information. Um, no, that no, that it, it's. I like. I've been like looking at things, reviewing things that I've been told in the past as well. So it definitely wasn't overwhelming for me, and it was very, very helpful. So thank you very much. It's okay. Uh, if you have any any like little questions, feel free to DM me, and I'll try and help you with that too. Thank you so much for like giving up like an extra hour of your time. Basically. Nah, it's fine. I like when I do it. Like, and it's I know it's like you know it's a lot of money for a lot of people to donate. Uh, you know, to give for the coaching sessions. So, um, I want to make sure that you're leaving here happy. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'd, I'd write that's more important to me than the money or the the time or whatever. Like, this is fine. Yes. All right. Well, take care. All the best and good luck on the climb. Thank you. Uh, I would say you too, but um. <laughs> have fun with streaming <laughs> yeah, thank you very much thank you alright bye yeah. goodbye